Always great chatting with my next guest, Felicia Spencer, who is uh, unfortunately coming off a loss to Amanda Nunes in her last fight. But we wanted to catch up and what, see what she's been up to. And right now, as you can see, she's enjoying that beautiful Florida weather. Uh, Felicia, how's it going? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back on. Of course. Always good catching up with you. But first, uh, as a Canadian, I got to ask, uh, TJ Laramie made some history last night. The uh, the bantamweight, or sorry, featherweight, I should say. He has a lot of bantamweight. That's why I slipped up there. But uh, he made some history last night, uh, becoming the first Canadian not only to win a contender series fight, but also win a UFC contract. Uh, you must be pretty uh, you know, proud as a Canadian to see uh, you know some more talent in the UFC. For sure, I uh, I was intending to watch the episode too, and I and I unfortunately did not. Uh, All the but more reason to. There you go. After that, that could have been a better sales pitch, right? So yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's always awesome to to be able to make history like that. You know, to you know how no, no matter how small or big it is, it's like always um, it's awesome to, to do that to be a Canadian and to make history like that. Yeah. And, and we've seen, we've seen a lot of success from Canadians. I mean, yourself, uh, you know, recently, uh, Tanner Bozer, I don't know if you've been following him with the mullet and everything in the heavyweight division. <laughs> is, is it kind of neat to be part of this sort of this new wave? Because, you know, back in the day it was GSP and it was, you know, Sam Stout and all these names, but now there's names like yourself and, and, and all these other fighters coming up it must feel pretty cool. It really does. It's kind of crazy to be in the same conversation as those other people. Um, but it's, it's nice. I know there's also like Jillian Robertson, who's, who's kind of like me. She's a Canadian. Living you know, in Florida. Citizen. Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy. Florida, yeah. So uh, I've met her a couple of times. So that's, yeah, um, it's definitely a cool group to be a part of. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's talk about the last fight. Uh, you're fighting one of the best in the world, Amanda Nunes, UFC 250. But I thought it was a good performance on your end. You went the distance. Not everyone does that with Amanda Nunes. I mean, she He's finished a lot of opponents. How do you look back at that performance? Because, uh, you know, kind of like the Cyborg fight as well. I know you didn't win that one, but I think you probably gained some fans uh, from that last fight. Uh, but yeah, I guess the durability points gain fans a little bit, but I definitely, I definitely look back at that and, and I'm disappointed by, you know, by myself and that performance. So, you know, I know a lot of people have really tried to, you know, just support me and, you know, tell me how, how great it was and all that. But it's definitely... One that stings, you know, to, to take that the loss the way it happened. But like, you know, I I do take, you know, I understand that I'm one of few that have gone the distance, especially lately with with uh, Amanda. And you know, I can kind of wear that on my shoulder. But you know, there was a lot of things that that I wish were a little different that night. And you know, it's it's a tough one. It's it seemed like you had a really good camp heading into the fight. Was there anything pre-fight that that maybe you wish went a little bit differently, or or is it, or do you feel like you were sort of at your at the top of your game heading into that fight? I really felt at the top. Yeah, I, I felt definitely on the top of my game. Like I was ready to take on the moment. Um, but you know, when once things started to happen, I just kind of felt like I was a little lost in there, like a little. Uh, like one step behind and, and not really thinking as clearly as I wanted to be, you know, which all credit to Amanda, obviously she's, she's the one who put me in that mental state, you know? So, uh, so that's part of the game, you know, it's all part of the game. And, and I know she had to deal with COVID. You had to deal with COVID. Do you feel like if, if we had no COVID right now, the fight might've gone differently or is there anything you, you think could have been different uh, just in your preparation, just with the fact we had so many restrictions? I mean, anything's possible. You know, I definitely think the way that you train can lead to different outcomes in the fight, but, you know, it comes down to fight night also. So, you know, who, who knows? I think maybe if I, maybe if there were different training partners, like new faces all the time in front of me during training, it would have felt more familiar to have a new face on fight night. But, you know, I really can't, can't point to any, you know, real, um, you know, like anything that could have been done differently or that I should have done differently. You know, I, I definitely, like I said, I felt great. Even going up, even walking into the cage, I felt like I was going to win that fight. So, um, you know, I felt good going into it. Uh, I mentioned COVID. Florida's getting hit pretty hard, I should say. I know we've had a lot of cases at American Top Team. Anyone you know been affected? I mean, I'm sure you have. In other words, we would have heard about it. But uh, anyone uh, that you know close to you has been impacted? Um, well, you know, just... No one, no one really close to me has been like devastated as far as like having really bad sickness. Um, everyone, everyone's been, you know, kind of impacted. You know, I've known, I've, I've seen a couple of businesses close. I've seen a couple, um, you know, like there's been people that I've been like, we had a, a scare, I guess you could call it. Like I was hanging out with my husband's aunt and uncle who were hanging out with his cousins 
who were at a bar where three people tested positive come to find out the next day, like where, you know, you find out days later that you were around people who were around people who were around people. And then it's like, ah, you know, so, <laughs> um, you know, we're taking precautions, but, you know, luckily I don't have to really be out in the, the heat of things, you know, with, with uh, my everyday life. So, you know, I feel pretty, feel pretty good about, you know, where we're at, but, you know, I know that a lot of people have been affected a lot worse than, than I have for sure. I know you're always training, but after that last fight, did you take some time off? Did you get some R and R, uh, some well deserved R and R, I should say, because you obviously had a title fight with one of the best in the world. I did. You know, I took. Uh, well, I had to. You know, I had to let myself heal a little bit. Um, so I, I took. Uh, you know, I really about two or three weeks ago, I really started to to step up with like doing more like structured workouts and stuff like that. Like really starting to feel the need to get back in, you know, start to do some stuff like that. But other than that, the last two months, I was really uh, doing a lot of yard work. <laughs> gotta get, <laughs> you know, gotta he, get done. I know how it is. I have to mow my I, lawn every week. It sucks, but this is my, you know, this is my, uh, my workout is just, you know, uh, pulling vines off trees. Cause we got this house a little over a year ago, but there was a lot of stuff outside that was just, it was in shambles. The whole house was in shambles. So we spent a lot of time inside. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to train. I'm just going to go out and, you know, try to make the house look nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had, I had to let myself heal though. I'm kind of getting to the point where I can slowly start to do more regular things. Um, but I really don't want to re- jump in too fast and then be one of those stories where I went back too fast. And then like, I rebroke my nose, you know, something like that, where it just, you know, it just extends the injury more because it feels good, but that's how it always is before you re it, you know? <laughs> so, uh, my eight weeks or supposed to be like nine weeks after my surgery I had my nose straightened um that was supposed to be like the end of august so it should be kind of good to start you know getting a little bit of light impact soon <laughs> okay so when when would be the ideal time to return are you looking like november december or, or even sooner than that like because obviously like you said you don't want to re-aggravate the injury yeah, I'm, I'm going to take my time, you know, and, and I also kind of want to see what's going on with the division. You know, I haven't seen any new fight bookings or anything. So, um, so I'm just going to kind of, you know, take it easy. My technically my suspension, uh, medical suspension is, is until the middle of December. So I might ride that out rather than try to get cleared early. You know, just, I did, you know, take my, you know, I had a few other minor injuries that are kind of nagging now that, um, you know, since the fight were, you know, don't feel good. So, uh, so yeah, probably, probably no sooner than December, you know, even I could even see it being January, you know, that kind of time. I was going to ask before. you that. Yeah. Would you you'd maybe wait till next year, early next year, just in case, make sure all the injuries are healed up and that when you step back in there, you're a hundred percent or at least close to a hundred percent. Yeah. So like, yeah, for now I'm like, I'm not even going to think about like looking for a new opponent or anything or, or really set a time frame. So, you know, I, 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 it's been nice to kind of feel like the urge to really want to be back into doing some certain, you know, certain things. And I think it, it's maybe going to be kind of good for me. Sorry to hear that point. Go no by. worries. Um, yeah. It might be, you know, kind of good to, to really want to be back in like more than, you know, more than I even am now, like the far, the longer I am kind of away from it, it kind of makes me have that drive again, that spark. So not that I really ever lost the spark, but I was definitely, um, it was, you know, it was a hard loss to take. So like, it was kind of, you know, a, more than a bummer to lose the way I lost. And, and, it, you know, I'm excited to like really feel excited about it and, and feel confident going into my next one, you know? And normally when I ask a fighter who they're going to fight next, there's always a lot of options, but in your division, there's like, you know, a handful of fighters. I do you even know who you'd fight next. Like, is there anyone that's even crossed your mind? I don't think people are in a rush to see your, the rematch between you and Megan, but uh, you know, is, is there anything that's going through your head right now? Honestly, no. Like, like you said, I, I kind of just want to see what, what goes on. And it sounds like Dana wanted to build the division. So I, maybe there'll be someone that comes on the scene and then has a fight. And then like when they, you know, their next fight would be me, like something like that, you know, so that would be cool just to kind of sit back and see what happens with the division and, you know, make myself available when it's time, when it's the right time, you know. Did you see the new UFC video game does not have the women's featherweight division? I don't know if that's concerning at all. Like, I, I'm not sure. Did you, did you catch that? <laughs> I did. Yeah. My husband uh, looked at the roster from someone on YouTube or something online and, um, they had Cyborg, I guess, but yeah, that was the only fight they went aside from Amanda. So, uh, but you know, it's not like they had the division and just left me off of it. So I'm not really too 
bummed about it, but it, you know, it's, it kind of, you know, it's, hopefully it's not going to be like that next time, you know, hopefully they'll have a division building and I understand why, you know, I don't know how, I don't really know how the game works, but I imagine that you have to have a division. Yeah, clearly these are the two people who should not be talking about the ins and outs of an EA sports game. That, that's for sure. And, and by the way, I do have to mention that Cyborg in that game is at 135, which is a weight class he's never competed in, but I get it because obviously there's more fighters there that make sense, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if they did that for her, they could have done that for, for the other couple. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that, <laughs> for, that's true. But, um, you know, but it is what it is. Like you said, uh, I'm not, I wasn't too surprised. Like I didn't have my hopes up, even though a couple people around me were like, Oh, you're definitely going to be in it. Like you were the main event, co-main event twice. Like how could you not be in it? But yeah, I kind of knew like, eh, it's kind of a stretch, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, that, so, that, is, that is a bummer. Okay. We'll work for it, you know, we'll work for it. And maybe that'll be like my, my next big achievement is making it to the game. <laughs> um, so. The other thing as well is like, we know Amanda Nunes obviously starting a family. We've seen some of the videos that are out there. There's really a lot of uncertainty as to what is next for her, whether it's at 135 or 145. Do you sort of have an idea? Cause it's, I mean, we don't really know what's happening with, with the featherweight division and, and even at bantamweight, we don't know if there's going to be any movement there. Have you heard anything, any insight that you can share that you've heard just, especially being in Florida? <laughs> um no i haven't really heard anything that that's not out you know out there you know i, I know from the comments a while ago now you know i mean it kind of made it seem like she was nearing her end but dana seems to really be against the idea you know especially with how her her performances have been it's not like she's taking damage and you know having really um brutal fights so kind of like an easy money why would you quit now you know uh but i know every fight is good until it's not you know so i can see her her mindset either way i would be curious to see her versus megan honestly you know i know i got the title shot first but i was always kind of curious like styles make fights and i think it's a really interesting style matchup and you know even though i feel like i would have been able to beat amanda um you know with different decisions that were made in the fight and you know, I have a win over Megan. I still feel like every fight is a fresh fight and like anything can happen, you know, anytime you fight someone. Yeah. And, and Megan has, she has good striking, right? So that's what makes it a little bit more interesting as far as that goes. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I hope that they, I hope that, you know, they continue to, to push the division and, you know, Megan can either take another fight next or maybe get a title shot. I imagine that Amanda would go back to Bantamweight if she was going to defend the band and weight title, or I also heard at some point that she might just stay at featherweight because the weight cut was getting hard. So that would be cool. You know, she stayed at featherweight, but uh, yeah, I don't think I have any information that, that the world doesn't already know. <laughs> Before I let you go here, you talked about the yard work. What else is downtime looking like right now? Are you watching any cool TV shows or anything like that? I know you're hanging out with the dogs. What, what, what else is going on yeah. with you? Um, you know, yeah, I find a few, I don't know. My, my husband started watching this, um, uh, it's like a it's like a British comedy, super dry humor, it's like Toast of London or something. Uh, that one was kind of I kind of just like I like to look at the TV and then look at him and be like, "You're crazy." <laughs> I, I get it more of a kick out of just watching him watch it. Uh, but, and Fluffy, my dog, is definitely like a huge part of my day now. <laughs> just making sure he's entertained and you know we just killed time together so actually i have been doing a lot more like gardening and like potting plants and growing i've just planted a bunch of seeds and i built a a shelf out of a pallet that was by the side of the road so just kind of like dipping my hands into some new stuff that i always wanted to do but just never really had time to to get into so so i'm doing a little bit of you know flowers and gardening and vegetable stuff <laughs> Felicia, great catching up with you. Glad to hear you're healing up well. Uh, excited to see you back in the cage, uh, like you said, either or late this year, or maybe early next year, whatever. But uh, either way, it's always fun watching you fight. I just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you've got any sponsors or shout outs or anyone you want to thank, I'll give you the last word. Thanks. Um, yeah, on social media everywhere, it's Phenom479. Um, and I'm also looking to do uh, some type of uh, auction uh, soon with uh, with a partner of mine, the other side apparel. You may have already heard a lot about them, with the, especially the hand wraps. And I want to do some kind of an auction to raise money for, uh, for a good cause, you know, in, in partnership with them. So look out for that soon.